Hi everybody, I'm going to start my Houston video in Illinois. Illinois flood victims denied assistance by FEMA. Did you know that there were areas in Illinois that had torrential rain mid-late July that Trump finally signed a major disaster declaration on August 31 and those who suffered flood damage to their homes have been denied assistance. This is Illinois. There are a lot of areas where floods are destroying people's homes and we don't even know about those areas. Uh, 3,200 residences were damaged. 244 major damage. But instead of federal grants, FEMA is sending people to get a low interest loan from the Small Business Administration for the victims in Cook, Lake, and McHenry counties in Illinois. To qualify for Small Business Administration assistance, at least 25 homes or businesses in a county must suffer major uninsured losses of 40% or more. Now, I know this because I went to Baton Rouge and there were an awful lot of flood victims in Baton Rouge last year. And I spoke to some of those victims of that flooding, which was also deliberate, but what did they tell me? FEMA was telling them to go get a loan. And if you don't qualify for the loan, come back to FEMA and we'll give you $2,000. Wow, $2,000. Americans pay through the nose taxes and hardly get any relief when they need it. Very upsetting. So, um, I want to read a thank you email from my friends in Houston. Sorry, I had to put you on hold for a second to make sure that I wasn't revealing their last name. This is what my friend and her husband wanted me to share with all of you, to all of you who donated to help them. There is a Hallmark card phrase that states, words can't express, etc. In our case, we want to express our gratitude to Carol for giving us a voice and to her many subscribers for hearing our message and donating in this time of crisis and, and critical need. Though there are too many instances in which man has done so much harm to self, others, the planet, and the universe, the most kindest attributes of human nature for compassion and caring have definitely shined through upon us in our darkest hours, and it wasn't from our families but from those individuals we have never met. Simply by nature, there are those that run from a crisis, be it fire, flood, etc., and those that stop to help rescue those in its path during and after. They are known as first responders. They are the core of the highest power's greatest gift in this world, and that is who you are. You are the brave, kind, caring individuals that are rarely seen, nor take credit for your actions and humanitarian deeds, but always seem to appear when a crisis occurs. My wife and I know you didn't have to take time out of your own life to donate to people you don't even know, but you did. These donations have been a godsend to us, and it has lifted our spirits to know that there are people that would give from their heart one of the most valuable resources in their lives. To date, my wife and I are obviously not the same people as we were before the flood, but we are stronger for it. We are weathered, but not broken. There were times we wished we could turn back the clock or have been more prepared. We even blame ourselves for not being able to later cope with getting on with life. When you are given 30 minutes to leave as water from a dam release 
enters your home, time simply runs out. The clock stops and you leave with the clothes on your back with three cats. To date, we are living in a one-bedroom apartment, very grateful for a roof over our heads, but with no apartment rental or storage assistance from FEMA, as we just received a letter of denial last week. To the many good souls who have entered our lives unexpectedly, but by no coincidence, my wife and I are forever grateful to you, your donations, and we love you all. Curtis and Marcella. And I want to thank everyone who donated. Yes, money is absolutely necessary. It keeps people afloat as they go through these nightmares. It helps them to get through these nightmares, but it also allows people who have been denied assistance by our fabulous government agencies or oh, those organizations called the American Red Cross that partners up with FEMA for every disaster to scam Americans. And yeah, in this case with Curtis and Marcella, their family turned their back on them. Sisters that could have helped them. Marcella's brothers, who I had forgotten to mention, also turn their backs on Marcella. Curtis and Marcella are wonderful, loving, caring souls. So, yes, I did post videos asking people to help. And I'm going to say again, I'll put my PayPal address down below in the description box. So if you feel like helping, because this is an ongoing nightmare. It never stops, and I sure wish that I could just snap my fingers and somehow come up with millions of dollars to help not just Curtis and Marcella, but all the people in need, and there are hundreds of thousands in Houston and the surrounding areas that are being denied assistance. So I'm focusing on Houston, but we've got people in California in need, in Illinois in need, in Florida in need, in Puerto Rico in need, and so many other areas. I want to play some news clips for you. Good evening. They say the wheels of government sometimes move slowly. Well, in hard hit Dickinson, money meant for flood victims isn't moving at all. And that's because members of a special committee cannot seem to coordinate a meeting date, and those who desperately need it are fed up with waiting. Jason Miles is live from Dickinson City Hall, and the situation could improve as soon as tonight, we understand, Jason. Definitely, there may be some good news. The Dickinson City Council meets at 7 o'clock here at City Hall, and there is an item on this agenda that may finally help free up funds for flood victims. Annette LeBlanc's home of 25 years. I worked two jobs to pay the house off early. Was destroyed by three feet of water during Harvey. And it was up to my waist. A pile of debris has been removed from the outside, but the inside remains stripped to the studs while LeBlanc makes piecemeal repairs without flood insurance. Every little bit helps. Uh, I got a bid today for a contractor for $12,500 just for his labor. LeBlanc is among hundreds who've applied for grants of up to $5,000 through the city of Dickinson, which has a flood relief fund of more than a million dollars and growing. We want to help people rebuild their homes, their businesses, get their lives back on track. But city spokesman Brian Millward admits distributing the money hasn't been easy. That's because a special seven-member committee appointed by the council more than a month ago has yet to even meet. As you, you know, might often see in your office, it can be hard to get everybody you know, together. They've got different projects going on. Some people may be rebuilding their own homes. I don't want to hear it. I'm so tired of people making excuses for other people. There is, as Marcella, my friend in Houston, has stated, she thinks that there has been a virus that has been unleashed that is causing great apathy. It has been, well, from this news report, one month after Hurricane Harvey 
and these seven people have not been able to meet to distribute the funds that they receive to help their own neighbors, to help their uh, constituents, and they can't seem to get it together to just meet and get those funds distributed. Is something wrong with this picture? Yes, there is something wrong with this picture. People are desperate for money, and you can, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I. It really is pathetic, what is happening. But, you know, that guy that you just heard from, the city spokesman, he's the pathetic one. He's the, you know, making excuses. But real people suffer the consequences. They suffer. They are stressed. They need help. Systems like LeBlanc. Please do something. We need the money. Additional assistance can't come soon enough. So that's Dickinson here. We have another broadcast. Ron, this is one of the hardest hit areas in Humble. This home behind me took on more than seven and a half feet of water. The family's been displaced. They have lost everything. But somehow the Red Cross says they're still not eligible for any help. Hurricane Harvey's stink still permeates through Melanie Rose's home. And every family member wishes things could go back to normal. I feel really sad because I really loved my room. Almost a month ago, Melanie and her daughter Lauren said goodbye to the house they called home. A few hours later, it looked like this. The floodwaters didn't stop rising. The water raised all the windows. They're full of water. All my windows have to be replaced. Now the house is gutted, empty, and unlivable. Melanie turned to the Red Cross and applied for a little financial help. I got a response yesterday uh, by a text message that said that we were not approved. This text broke Melanie's heart all over again. I was upset. It hurt my feelings that, you know, oh, so we don't qualify? You know, we lost everything. The text didn't specify why she was denied. Melanie was even more baffled when her sister, who lives one street down, was approved to receive money. She called me today and said, I was approved today and, and everything's fine. And she got she got four feet of water. We got seven and a half. So I don't know what the rhyme or reason is. She lives down the street. So it's the same neighborhood, same affected area. And Melanie isn't alone. So many of you called and emailed our newsroom with your own stories of loss and Red Cross text message denials. The Red Cross told me it's working through some glitches, but wouldn't elaborate on specifics. If they sent me an email that said there are people who are in more need than you, then I would be absolutely fine with that. But what's upsetting Melanie tonight is the Red Cross's silence. She says families deserve an explanation why they don't qualify after losing their home. I felt like we've lost a lot, and and so have a lot of people, and, and I just wanted to know why. I pushed the Red Cross for more answers on this specific situation today, and a spokeswoman told me that individual circumstances vary and that the family should file an appeal. But that appeal process is just clicking an appeal on a website. No other information, new information is input, so it's difficult to see how any of these decisions could be reversed down the road. Reporting from Humble, standing for Houston. And here we have another news broadcast. Ellen from Harvey, homeowners need help rebuilding after losing so much. The bathroom's gone, everything's gone down here. But getting help from FEMA is proving to be tough. There wasn't enough damage. We go straight to FEMA to get answers. People whose homes were flooded during Harvey say FEMA is testing their patience. They don't know why they've been denied grant money or in some cases received as little as $11. Here are the newest numbers from FEMA. More than 817,000 people registered for assistance after Harvey. So far, FEMA approved $662 million in assistance, with $372 million of that coming to Harris County. Jason Miles took your questions to FEMA. Jason, what they have to say? Well, specifically, we went out to Cinco Ranch and spoke to a flooded homeowner frustrated by FEMA. I also came here to the FEMA Disaster Recovery Center, one of 10 in Harris County, to try and get some answers. So we prepared for about four inches. A step through Gina Malowich's front door reveals what seven times that amount did to her family's home. You got how much water? 28 inches. Everything on the first floor, including a recently remodeled kitchen. Dishwasher, 
stove, refrigerator. Is ruined. And water is just water, but this was not just water. It was raw sewage. You could smell it. You couldn't walk through it. And our house is soaked in it. Like everyone in her subdivision, where piles of debris lined the streets, Malewich figured her family was a shoe-in for FEMA relief. Then they got this email, which states in part, quote, you are not eligible. Is it possible to have 28 inches of water in your home and still get denied? It's possible. But FEMA spokesman Peter Herrick says, don't believe everything you read, even in a FEMA. <laughs> don't believe everything that you read, even when we are sending it to you? Are you kidding me? A letter. A lot of letters that we put out will say denial at the top, when really what it means is we need some more information from you. You're asking. Wow. So they send out letters that say you are not approved, but really what they mean is that they need more information. This is our government. This is what Americans are actually standing for. Are you kidding me? This is so unbelievably outrageous. It is beyond comprehension. It's incomplete. Keep in mind, he says the agency cannot duplicate any benefits flood insurance or loans might provide. I know that it can be frustrating to go through, but what we want people to do is prove to us that we made a mistake. We want to provide as much assistance as we possibly can. An inspector determined the Malowich home was still habitable despite the damage. That's You're not living here. No, we can't live here. They plan to appeal and flood FEMA with any information it may need. And here's something else to keep in mind. The maximum payout for a FEMA grant is $33,300, but you can get as little as a couple of dollars. In fact, I heard from a guy on Twitter who got just $11. Mr. Herrick says that is entirely possible based on the application process and what you qualify for. Back yeah, $11. Now, these... <laughs> There are some people who did not have flood insurance. There are some people who were flooded, didn't have flood insurance because they were not living in a floodplain, which happened to many people in Baton Rouge last year. My friend and her husband, Curtis and Marcella, they were paying the additional flood insurance through a private insurance company when the dues that they pay to the home association that they are members of include flood insurance, but they were paying a private insurance company for flood insurance. Two thirds of that premium went to FEMA. They paid for a very, very long time. You pay premiums for years and years, and then you get denied. Then you get denied. So paying that money, those premiums, to this private corporation, to this private insurance company that kept a third of Curtis and Marcella's money and then sent off two-thirds of Curtis's and Marcella's money to FEMA, well, they made off, didn't they? And Curtis and Marcella can't even get rental assistance, storage assistance, yeah, it is incredibly upsetting. Here's another one. Thousands of people continue to stand in line around parts of Harris County for emergency food relief following Harvey. We stopped by the Southwest Multi Service Center today. That's where our Michelle Choi met up with some folks braiding the heat for those benefits. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that this was October 3rd and still waiting in line for assistance. If you do some research, you will find that there are an awful lot of articles, videos with people that are still waiting for assistance. Two and a half months after Harvey, of course, Houston's poorest faced the long, uncertain post-Harvey recovery. And I'm not going to read all of these articles. You can read the heartbreaking, the heartbreaking stories of a woman who had her trailer completely destroyed. All of her dogs died in the flood. And there's no assistance for her. She is now living 
in a car that was loaned to her by a friend and she lives in an area where she is feeding her neighbor's pets hoping that that neighbor is going to be coming back her neighbor 73 year old nothing is normal nothing is normal so there is a pastor a pastor the lead pastor of Bethel Baptist Church who took to social media to promote a different slogan nothing is normal nothing is normal when I read that I thought oh boy I gotta go back to this this New World Order plans exposed by insiders in 1969 Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan recalled his recollections of a lecture back in 1969 the lecturer was Dr. Richard Day Dunnigan refers to Dr. Day as a member of the order this lecture Dr. Richard Day started by saying nothing will be recorded you will not have any pens or or pencils or paper to write down anything that I say and it was the future plans for the United States back in 1969 and I will link below to this article you can read it it's very long the transcript the recollections are very very long but as you read you will be horrified to see how successful all of these plans have been throughout the decades. This back in 1969. What was one of the topics? Ah, no more security for Americans. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is normal. Nothing is permanent. Streets would be rerouted and renamed. Areas you had not seen in a while would become unfamiliar. Among other things, this would contribute to older people feeling that it was time to move on. They feel they couldn't even keep up with all of the changes in areas that were once familiar. Buildings would be allowed to stand empty and deteriorate, and streets would be allowed to deteriorate in certain localities. The purpose of this was to provide the jungle, the depressed atmosphere for the unfit. Uh, buildings and bridges would be made so that they would collapse. More accidents involving airplanes and railroads and automobiles to contribute to the feeling of insecurity that nothing was safe here in the U.S. of A. And there are so many. Um, I, you read this and it's all connected, right? So, I also thought about this because I think that, you know, an awful lot of Americans never want to confront anybody and they never want to get anybody upset with them and they always want to appear nice and kind and rational and and they just suck it up left and right getting screwed over and over and they expect that they expect Americans to not respond to what is unbelievably outrageous like when you hear a news reporter say we send out letters saying you are not eligible for assistance but what we really mean is, well, we, we need more information. Really? <sighs> know how people respond, making them do what you want. So somewhere in this presentation, Dr. Day made two statements that Dr. Dunnigan wanted to recall. One statement, people can carry in their minds and act upon two contradictory ideas at one time, provided that these two contradictory ideas are kept far enough apart. And the other statement is, you can know pretty well how rational people are going to respond to certain circumstances or to certain information that they encounter. So to determine the response you want, 
you need only control the kind of data or information that they're presented or the kinds of circumstances that they're in. And being rational people, they'll do what you want them to do. They may not fully understand what they're doing or why. What our government wants people to do is to just walk off and die. So how many times were Curtis and Marcella denied? How many times did FEMA require more and more and more documents when Curtis and Marcella had already provided them with documents? It's the incessant ongoing wearing down of Americans so that they just go away. It's very, very upsetting, but one of um, <laughs> weather control. Speaking back in 1969, we can or soon will be able to control the weather. I'm not merely referring to dropping iodide crystals into the clouds to precipitate rain. That's already there. Well, it was already being done in, in 1969, Vietnam. Uh, they were using weather control, but real control and weather, Dr. Day stated in this lecture in 1969, that weather would be used as a weapon of war, a weapon of influencing public policy. So you create these extreme weather events, you create these fires, that rage out of control for many reasons. One of the reasons is because they are so now, all of the trees, whether you're in a forest or in the suburbs, anywhere, anywhere you live now, the trees are just so unbelievably incendiary because of all the hev heavy metals that are dumped on them, the chemicals that are dumped on them, and they're dying. So they are unbelievably flammable. But people think that this is global warming. That's right. So they create these weather events. And they continue in greater frequency. The destruction is such a tragedy. Part of weather control is that they can actually increase the temperature of air, the atmosphere so they can keep it really hot in places when it's that time of year where it should not be all that hot. And people think, oh my God, it's global warming. So they do this to influence public policy, bring about those climate change uh, rules and regulations, and bring about all of those plans to create smart and sustainable cities all to control the masses for the elite, the globalists, these crazy, crazy nut jobs who are, unfortunately, um, they have the wealth and the power to bring it about, and they are bringing it about. But yes, man, do people need to begin to think outside the box and begin to respond appropriately, appropriately to these crazy people who say crazy things? Like, you know, this guy who said, not this guy, he's the pastor of this uh, church, but that reporter, or I'm sorry, the FEMA official who said, we send out these letters that say you're, you're not eligible, but really what we mean is we need more information. Uh, please, come on, Americans. Uh, how do you deal with that kind of idiocy? You don't just walk away from it. But you know what has happened to Americans? When you do get into these circumstances, when you fall into these circumstances, your family has turned their back. Your family has abandoned you. You have no 
where to go to get the help that you need. And your government is now making you so stressed because, well, you've got to jump over hoop and another hoop and another hoop and another hoop only to get denied assistance but they don't really deny your assistance. What they mean is just appeal again, okay? You, you just, you have to read through the, no, it's very clear. FEMA, if they wanted more information, then you should have said that. But what then do you do? You never want to piss anybody off, right? You don't want to piss off the receptionist that is uh, working at FEMA. You don't want to piss off any of the secretaries. You don't want to piss off any official for fear that you're going to get denied assistance, but you get denied assistance anyway. So the fear, the, the desperation leads you to act in ways that really you wouldn't if you didn't need if you weren't desperate for assistance, you would be responding appropriately to the idiocy that is going to, going on uh, with all of these disasters. But yeah, whole communities, whole communities in Texas, in Houston, surrounding area, they haven't seen any FEMA officials or Red Cross officials. They are left on their own, abandoned. Um, this coastal officials here in Fulton, Port Aransas, Aransas, I believe is the way you pronounce that town. Sorry if I'm wrong. Rockport, Refugio, other, other areas. Local officials who are actually, actually doing all that they can to get the assistance that they need, but working for the residents, their neighbors in these town, in these towns. They had a, a meeting or a hearing at the House Appropriations Subcommittee uh, just recently in Corpus Christi. One stated that trying to get the assistance for those that he represents has created so much stress that he's had suicidal thoughts. His home was destroyed. All he's left is with his uh, TV and a chair and a mattress on the floor behind the chair that he and his wife are sleeping on. He knows winter is coming and the residents of his area are living in tents, hotels two months after the storm. The Port Aransas mayor said they rank high on promises and way low on promises kept. And these criticisms were aimed at FEMA. FEMA. Greg Abbott finally gave $50 million to Houston after there was a public dispute with the mayor. Otherwise, Houston, you wouldn't have even gotten that $50 million. But Houstonians, did you actually see any of that money? Because a lot of the money is being kept for rebuilding Texas. Oh, I do want to say one more thing. In one of these film broadcasts, um, we were hearing from a woman who said that the, the sewage that came into her home, Curtis and Marcella just got word that they have to pay 10% of the contracting course, uh, costs or 10% of the new appliances and... Um, Oh, something else, and I don't recall, so I'm not going to say it. But, interesting, they had insurance. They had double the insurance through their home association, as well as that private insurance company. But no, they have to, they now have to pay 10%. But tiles were laid in their kitchen. And guess what? Marcella told me that this white, bubbly, oily substance 
literally is seeping through the grout, making its way into the kitchen. A white, bubbly, oily substance that they don't even know what it is. They ask the contractor. The contractor doesn't know what it is. The tiles need to come up again. A white, bubbly, oily substance. And yes, Marcella said the waters were so toxic. <sighs> it's... This is... This should not be, all right? This is deliberate, and it is to bring about the plans that were made back when and ongoing for decades. Um, shifting populations and economies, tearing at the social roots. Along this line, there were talks about people losing their jobs as a result of industry and opportunities for retraining, and particularly population shifts would be brought about. Population shifts were to be brought about so that people would be tending to move into the Sun Belt. Well, guess what? Here uh, in South Carolina, there are an awful lot of jobs, but they're all corporate. Mom and, and pop stores um, and independent uh, business owners, they're all shut down. What you do have, you have an awful lot of car um, uh, industry, Michelin tires, corporate headquarters down here, BMW, I believe, but it's all corporate. And I have met an awful lot of people who have relocated to this area because there's work to be had here. Guess what? We are part of the mega region, I believe. Our mega region is called the Piedmont Atlantic mega region. Houston, a lot of people are, are moving to Houston and to areas that if you don't know about Agenda 2030, uh, America 2050, I've posted a lot of videos on it, and there are mega regions, 10, 11 mega regions in the United States where they want to move everybody into, and they will be living in these stack impacts, these uh, mixed use buildings, commercial and residential. Residents live on top, commercial, all your shopping needs are right down below. Uh, you will not be able to drive. You'll be biking everywhere. Um, you'll have a park to go to within walking distance. But all the reshaping of these mega regions is taking place. And they are, they are shifting economies and populations right smack into these regions. So <laughs> it's... It's really maddening when you know what is happening. They would be the sort of people without roots in their new location. So you have an awful lot of people moving into areas of the Texas Triangle where there is work to be had. You got a lot of people moving from the north down to South Carolina and no doubt, you know, in other areas of the Piedmont Atlantic mega region to find jobs, but these are people that are not, they, their only reason for coming here is a work, a, a, a paycheck, a job, but they are, they don't have the same cultural um, affiliation with everybody down here. The traditions are different. Um, so they're kind of rootless. And when you do, kind of lose your place in the world, your physical place in the world. You move to these areas and the only thing that you care about is the paycheck. You don't really care about what's going on because you don't have any ties to the area. So it doesn't really mean anything to you. And it's a great way to implement an awful lot of change in the area when you've got an awful lot of people coming in to it, and that creates a ripple effect of 
you know, a lot of things happening. And those who are living here in this mega region, and I'm sure the tr same is true in Houston. All right, so you have people who are tied to this area, have lived here all their life, but they see an awful lot of changes happening, like, wow, a bicycle path um, and a park next to it. And they see, wow, all of these uh, malls opening and, and these, uh, unfortunately, these chain stores, but a lot of people love chain stores and these fast food restaurants and these chain restaurants opening up and they love it. So they say, okay, great. We've got a lot of people moving into the area um, for jobs, but it's creating a lot of benefits for us. So they sit back and they don't, they just kind of reap the benefits. It's a, it's a fabulous plan. You've got to admit these people are incredibly brilliant. So yeah, without roots in their new locations and traditions, they're easier to change in a place where there are a lot of transplanted people as compared to trying to change traditions in a place where people grew up and had an extended family and had roots. Um, Texas County official after Harvey, the Red Cross was not there, not there. And this is a heartbreaking article two months after Harvey coastal Texas town still desperate for housing and it is essentially the uh, based on this meeting with local officials in Corpus Christi at the House Appropriation Subcommittee but well they talk about different individuals who are really struggling and this woman here, told to get a, I think this is the article, told to get a, um, an SBA loan. And she was like, why do I have to get a loan? No, that's a different article. Um, We've got a greater homeless population than we've even, than we've ever had before. Of course you do, because people lost their homes. 43 families were living in one small motel and others were living in tents. They're still in the hotels, they're still in motels, they're still in tents. And now it's winter time. So, I do want to say Trump laid out 7.4 billion for Hurricane Harvey. The state of Texas is asking for an additional 121 billion from the federal government. And that is not for individuals. It is for infrastructure, the destroyed infrastructure in Houston. So 55 million raised during hand in hand telethon, all of those wonderful stars. Let's just listen to a few minutes of this. Wow, 12 million, 40 million, 35 million, 20 million, all of these people, millions, millions, millions. Wow, 350 million, yeah, you go. Uh, wow. Give. Who now face an uncertain future. <laughs> Tonight, yeah. we want to help. We're here to raise money, lift some spirits. When tough times hit, this is who we are. Yeah, this is who we are. $245 million. Mr. Climate Change himself, Mr. Global Warming himself. Did he give any money to those suffering in Houston and the surrounding there is no, but he, they, they get together, they do these telethons, all these stars who have so much money that they could actually donate just amongst themselves 
and help everybody in Houston and the surrounding area. But they don't do that, right? No. But they show up. They do their part. This is a fabulous video, and it is on the Black Child's channel. Check it out. The link is below. Hand in hand, Illuminati, Hollywood, raise money for charity. Really? Oh, and you got to check it out because you got to listen to these two. Tell that, that, wow, heartwarming story of people hand in hand in Houston helping one another. Three billion dollars? One one person, Oprah, my God, her money could help so many people. 302 million, share, share. But what they do is beg Americans to donate. So they got $55 million. Um, rebuild Texas Fund, relief, recover, rebuild. Help us reach our goal of 100 million. They got 86.7 million strong. Rebuild Texas after Hurricane Harvey. Do you think individuals are going to be seeing any of this money? Or is it going to that fabulous energy carter? Agenda 2030. The district master plan. Plans that were in effect prior to Hurricane Harvey to bring about all of these changes to Houston for the Texas Triangle mega region. And you can click on all of the hyperlinks to get to the specific plans for specific areas. And yeah, it's all about creating bike paths, everything Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. That money will not be going to help Houstonians or those in the surrounding area. It will be towards developing the Agenda 2030 Sustainable Texas Triangle. And too bad for the individuals who live there. J.T. Watts. I don't even know who J.T. Watts is. I guess he's a sports person. Um, is he? I don't even know. But he got... 37 million in donations. And let's see, former presidents, yes. Oh, these really disgusting Bushes, Clinton, Obama, and Carter. Carter always seems kind of like, well, there's a picture, and all of the presidents stand together, and then Carter is just a little off skew. But yeah, they all show up as they do after disaster like Haiti. Wow. And wow, did they ever screw the Haitian people who desperately needed help. The Clinton Foundation taking in billions in donations from people around the world. And it, it, that, you know, fundraiser was a great success for the Clintons, not for the Haitian people. But who was it? It was Bill and it was Daddy Bush, you know, the, the Daddy Bush Sr. to raise all of that money and screw the Haitian people. So they got $31 million for this uh, fundraiser that all of the presidents got together with the stars in Hollywood to get relief funds for those suffering disasters. Got... We, we have GoFundMe pages with an awful lot raised for people and dogs. For Hurricane Harvey victims. Now for these GoFundMe um, pages, perhaps people have been helped. But hundreds of thousands need help. Over a million people had their homes flooded. Where are they? I'm sure many have good families that have not turned their back and they're staying with them. But there's an awful lot of people in tents living in their cars. There's a bigger homeless population.
corporations, United Airlines, 2,552. You know, everywhere I went here, I saw, you know, on ATMs, I, I walk into a gas station, there's an ATM. And in the window of that ATM, what does it say? Donate, 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 Hurricane Harvey. And you would see the totals. And the totals amounted to, well, one ATM, I remember, was over a million dollars. Another ATM was over two million dollars. Where is this money going? Where is the money going? And when you see our fabulous Red Cross, American Red Cross, and you see so many articles on how yeah, floundered? No. They just didn't show up. They did their photo ops. The 400 that they promised those victims of Hurricane Harvey that ended up in shelters, they only got it maybe four to six weeks later when there was a massive outcry. But those victims were promised $400. And Har uh, uh, the American Red Cross received in donations for Hurricane Harvey victims $459 million. $459 million. So all told, um, it was with all of these charities and fundraisers by all of these stars and presidents, including the uh, 7.4 billion from the federal government. 8.2 billion dollars. 8.2 billion dollars came in from donations and our federal government, the American taxpayer. And yet what you hear are people being denied assistance? Red Cross denying people assistance. FEMA denying people assistance. And my hunch is that all of these people raising money, all of these famous people raising money, all of these corporations raising money, all of the banks raising money, Walmart donate, to Hurricane Harvey victims raising money. Where's the money going? I have no doubt it is going to rebuild Texas. Sorry that this was so long. Um, I have my PayPal account down below. Please donate now, donate now. We do have to band together because the monies that we hear about being donated are not getting to the people who need it. And you know what? Every single day when you are in desperate need and that need does not get met, you get worse and worse and worse. So now is the time for all of us to just donate a little so people can be helped. Every little bit helps. And thank you to all of you who have donated because you do really give hope and lift spirits. It isn't just about the money. It's about seeing that people care enough to help people that they don't even know. But that is the human race. We may not know. I may not ever, ever meet my subscribers in Scotland, in Ireland, in Germany, in, in New Zealand, in, um, in so many different countries. But you know what? I have seen them donate to Americans. Because, and I'm speaking for them, I shouldn't. They will tell me if I'm wrong, but they get that we are all connected.
It doesn't matter what country you live in. It does not matter the color of your skin. It does not matter what religion you've got going. It does not matter whether you're male, female. It does not matter. What matters is that we all come together now because there is a war that is destroying all of us. And yes, this war, all of the agendas keep going on. Trump is not going to save the day. So these agendas, who, who is next that's going to be taken out? Who is next? And when you find yourself suddenly facing that nightmare that so many millions of Americans are facing, and, well, has your family abandoned you? Will they? What about those friends that you call friends? Will they be there to help you? Because so many of us have been shocked, shell-shocked, that we have been abandoned by friends, by family. So that's when you really get get to see that it is the good souls that come to your aid. Yeah, I do, really. I don't know how it is that people can't feel for everybody who is really struggling now. I see comments below, you know, with people saying, you really care. How do you not care? I don't get that. And maybe Marcel is right. My friend in Houston who says, she does. She's like, they have got to have released some virus that is affecting empathy in people because so many people really are just about their own life and living uh, their own comfort and they don't care. It's ongoing. This does not stop even though the events that take place, well, now they're different and so many people on YouTube are posting on the latest and greatest of what is taking place. The Americans who get destroyed by these disasters, they live it every single day. And it is hard. So please help out. Lessen their load. My God, if I knew how I could you know, suddenly become this inspirational speaker and do the fundraising that is necessary to bring in millions so that so many people could be helped, I would be doing it. And if anybody out there can do it, do it, please. Because people are hurting and they do need your help. Links are below to all articles and videos. And thank you so much, guys. Thank you for the support, for the kind words. That helps me to keep going. And thank you to every individual who has donated. It does, it really kinda, it means so much. Thank you.